Hello, I'm Kari Stewart. I am part of the talks team at Greenbelt. And it's Saturday morning at Greenbelt, and we're about to go on the wild food forage. Uh, I have no idea what this is going to be like. I'm told that we are going to find out what sorts of edible things you can find around the race course at Greenbelt. Did you know that the, the, the Western diet, uh, <laughs> most people only eat about 20 plants? and the majority of the Western diet comes from about five plants. Well, the Mesolithics, that's the, the, the group of people that were eating off the land before we started agriculture, the last, last group to do that, sort of 12,000 years ago. They were eating four, five hundred plants, and there's, you know, we'll be talking about 40 plants, so that might be doubling your knowledge. And the real reason for that is because you've got tastes and vitamins and all sorts of things that I guarantee you won't be able to buy in Sainsbury's. We're going to start off with these two. Um, which of these two do you think is the most nuisance plant? The one Net that's got dog. the worst... Nettle. 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 Okay. Nettle's got a bad name. Who said dog? dog. dog. Why? Can't get rid of it. Digging it up. Long roots. Very long root. This isn't the best time to be eating nettle because you can see that it's in flower and after the nettles in flower you get little crystals in the leaves which aren't very healthy to eat so go for it in the spring you can recognize it easily so it's a really good one to go for i mean most people know that nettles edible uh, but up until very recently it's been used in various different places it was being sold in markets during the bosnian crisis as a kind of you know technically known as a famine food which kind of doesn't do it any favors because it's actually really nice but it's one of the plants that's so high in vitamins that if you've, if you've had a very Western diet, you need to kind of go steady eating it because some people, uh, we'll talk about the kind of health and safety stuff as we go along, but nettle is a really good um, illustration of plants you want to try in small doses first if you're not used to them. Uh, my father once was fed a bowl of nettle soup and was projectilely sick from because it's so rich in nitrogen and goodies. This is wool made from nettle uh, um, stem and it's uh, it's very tough. It's, it's, I, I was trying to break it. Oh see you can break it but it takes some some tugging so something you can do with nettle stem make wool out of it. Who knew? Anybody know any other names for dandelion? An alternative name? Something about bedwetting. Pisson Lee, is it? Yeah. In France, it's known as Pisson Lee, which um, describes one of its medical, and it is, actually describes why it's useful as a spring detox, because yes, it does make you go to the, to the loo, um, but that's a good thing as part of a detox, is actually detoxing your, uh, your blood through <coughs> your kidneys, your processes of elimination. It's one of the ones to have on the list anyway. Um, but we want to talk about it from, from its edible reasons because it's the first first of the plants that's bitter. This is a dandelion root that's been roasted and it's meant to be useful uh, for making a sort of coffee if you don't have coffee beans to hand. Um, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a try. It actually kind of tastes like roasted coffee beans, interestingly enough. It's a little bit bitter. Definitely taste the roasted taste. I have no idea what coffee made with it would taste like, but... Does anybody like it? Not bad. Can everyone see the pink flower in the bottom of the ditch there? It's um, Himalayan balsam. And if you get within touching distance of it when it's in seed, you just have to touch the uh, seed pods. And if you hold your hand in front, because it's going to jump out of the seed pod into your hand, and then you can just eat those as a sort of wayside snack. St. Patrick apparently, uh, says legend, St. Patrick apparently used this to explain to the uh, <coughs> Irish heathens about the Holy Trinity. For the umpteenth time, as the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, all in one, do you understand now? Uh, something like that. That was just a little joke. <laughs> Uh, you can eat every part of this plant. It's absolutely wonderful to eat. Um, we, we're drinking uh, this part dried. We're drinking the flower of clover dried as a tea. It's very nice. Um, my wife's very excited about uh, the leaves when they're dried can impart a vanilla flavour to sponges and things like that. Um, oh, there's a cricket as well. 
Also edible. <laughs> edible. <laughs> yeah, the cricket, the cricket's edible. Um, but I'm quite excited about the medicinal uh, uses of this plant. This is, again, quite a strong anti-cancer plant, and there's a lot of actual demonstrable actions that, that this does. One is that um, clover tincture or clover tea puts up a, a membrane around cancers that stops Sorry, them... Sorry, I can't let you get away with that. That is not true. There's, you have no evidence for that. OK, the books that we've read, which I can point you towards at the end, and the current herbal science uh, are researching the anti-cancer properties, which include putting a membrane around cancers which stop them growing. There's a second bit of research to do with them stopping the blood flow to cancers, and I think this is quite interesting research. I'm not telling you that this is what they actually do. I'm talking about the research that herbalists are actually doing. Are we clear on that? Yes. OK. Um, what else can we say about clover? You it's sort of got phytoestrogens as well. Suck the, ne the nectar out. <laughs> yeah, back to, the, back to the safe stuff. Again, I'm not going to do this because it's not been washed, but um, pulling the petals off and pulling the flowers off and sucking the nectar out of the back is, um, you know, wonderful practice. Please do try that at some point. So the white, the white, white one, which I call clover, is that clover? Yeah, the white yeah, clover is interchangeable, but the red's got, I think, got more flavour to it. Um, what was the third? Rose bay. Yeah, I'm going to pick that up. You're going to have to shout loud. Uh, I am on first. <laughs> I just wanted to point it out. That's um, not rose bay, but it's willow herb, which is related to rose bay that you see all over the place. Can everyone hear me okay? Um, you might have seen the rose bay with the great big conical sort of flower heads and it just takes over where there's been flat, where there's been fires in particular and it was once known as singer weed because it grew up where the singer sewing machine factory used to be before it was bombed. Um, but you can use the flowers from, this is um, a, a related rose bay and you can use it in similar ways but there's just less flowers but you can use these as a tea um, also we've made jelly from them and you get a lovely sort of wild flavour but also as long as you put some lemon or lime juice in with the jelly you get the lovely pink colour as well so it's a natural colouring um, also the leaves the ones on the rose bay willow herb are better and we've got some for you to try but they make a lovely tea and they've got tannins in them, which gives that sort of slightly bitter uh, tea effect when you drink it. So we're going to have a try of that. Can anybody bring a mug? Yes. Yes. Can I have um, three or four volunteers who are tea drinkers who would like to try Rose Bay Willow Herb Leaf Tea? Any volunteers? I've only got a small flask, so I see the first cups that come. Here we go. <laughs> just tip out what you've already had. Different to the rose bay willow herb is the big one. Okay, yeah. And that's just this is just going to be a... Yeah, it's got a different uh, first bank. Oh. Yeah. There's... Yeah. There are umpteen <laughs> willow herbs. There's, you know, loads of them, but they can be used in interchangeable anyway. ways. Of course you can. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, it's it's oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, it doesn't have a particularly strong oh, flavour, but... Sort of. As a herbal tea, it's quite nice. I don't drink all I drink that. <laughs> yeah, it's got, it, it's got a herbal tea, kind of chamomile kind of smell, I think. Oh, yeah. Under your feet. Yeah, we're going to move on. I'm sorry. Not quite. by doing this but I want to take you to the ones we're going to look at at the end which does mean that tomorrow I'll miss out the ones that we've done and go and talk about the parts that we've missed out today if you want to come back but basically we're going to head over um, to the other side of the race course now so keep heading in that direction Sorry. <laughs> that does give you five minutes to natter amongst yourselves and come and ask us questions if you'd like to Thank you.
Yeah.